Hey everybody, and welcome to the next video in our series of videos on the traditional problem of induction. Recall in the videos on Monday, we introduced the traditional problem of induction, which we say is a problem that derives from the philosopher David Hume. And according to the, to the arguments offered by David Hume, the problem is that scientific inductive logic cannot be justified rationally. Right? And the basic argument he gives for that is laid out here. So the first premise, scientific inductive logic can only be justified either deductively or inductively. That is by offering arguments for it that are either good by the standards of deductive logic or good by the standards of inductive logic. Furthermore, scientific inductive logic cannot be justified deductively, nor can it be justified inductively. Therefore, it can't be justified at all. And in Monday's video, we looked a little more closely at Hume's reasons for believing premise two and premise three. We then started to look last Monday at uh, some proposed responses to the traditional problem of induction. In particular, we looked at attempts to justify induction inductively. That is to challenge that third premise of Hume's argument, that we can't justify inductive logic inductively. What we want to look at now are two attempts to justify inductive logic or scientific inductive logic that attempt to do so deductively, right? And those are, as we list here, first the pragmatic justification for inductive scientific inductive logic and what's called the nomological explanatory justification for scientific inductive logic. Um, these, I think, like the inductive justification, have some at least initial intuitive plausibility to them, and they're both popular among philosophers. We should also note that both of these justifications come in a variety of forms and uh, a variety of degrees of sophistication. So there are very sophisticated versions of what the pragmatic justification and the nomological explanatory justification that we're only going to gesture at. We're only going to present rather simplified versions of these justifications. And if you're interested, uh, I'd definitely recommend that you can do some more reading yourselves on these. A great place to start would be the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's entry on the problem of induction. It goes over each, actually, of these three uh, proposed solutions to Hume's problem in a lot more depth and provides a lot of references. But we'll just go over a simplified version of both of these as we did with the inductive justification of inductive logic. Okay. okay. Well, let's start with the pragmatic justification of induction. That'll be the topic of this video, and then the next video we'll cover the nomological explanatory solution. So the pragmatic justification of induction is most commonly associated with Hans Reichenbach, famous philosopher of the 20th century, though uh, it had originally been in the work of Herbert Feigl, uh, and a more modern incarnation of this attempt, sort of attempt to justify in scientific inductive logic can be seen in the more recent work of Gerhard Schurz on meta-induction. All right, so what is the pragmatic justification of induction? Well, according to the proponents of the pragmatic justification of induction, we cannot supply any good arguments with known premises and the conclusion that scientific induction, inductive logic is rationally justified in the sense of suggestion one. So in a sense, they concede, the proponent of the pragmatic justification of induction logic of inductive logic concedes to David Hume that they can't really justify uh, the reliability of inductive logic in the sense that Hume uh, was looking for. However, they challenge that suggestion one is in fact a proper characterization of rational justification. I think we don't need to, for scientific inductive logic to be rationally justified in the sense of suggestion one for it to be the system of logic that we should really be employing. Rather, what they say is that scientific inductive logic need not be reliable to be rational, as suggestion one has it, right, in order to show that, that scientific inductive logic is rational according to suggestion one, we have to show that scientific inductive lo logic is reliable. That is, the arguments to which it assigns high inductive probability tend to lead from true premises to true conclusions most of the time. Part of the, just, uh, the pragmatic justification says we don't need that, right? Rather, what we need to show is that it's optimal, right? And that leads to this suggestion three. Right? A system of inductive logic is rationally justified if we can show that the arguments it judges inductively strong, those to which it assigns high inductive probability, 
tend to lead from true premises to true conclusions most of the time. If the argument's judged strong by any method well, right? That is to say, right, that scientific inductive logic has to be shown to be optimal. That is at least as good as any other method, right? If any other method is successful or reliable, so too will be scientific inductive logic, even though it's possible that no method at all is reliable, right? So note that this is, this is a weaker notion of justification than we had in suggestion one. But still, right, um, it's seemingly, at least on the surface, a very interesting one, and then one, and one that would be significant if we could show, really, that scientific inductive logic is optimal. That is, that it'll be successful if anything is. Then that would give us good reasons to use or to employ scientific inductive logic, right? So let's see if we can uh, unpack the pragmatic argument for why scientific inductive logic meets this standard of justification. So Reichenbach thought that we could show by a deductively valid argument that scientific inductive logic is rationally justified in the sense of suggestion three. That is, he thought we could prove that scientific inductive logic is optimal, that if any system of inductive logic is successful, scientific inductive logic will be too. Now, to introduce a simplified sort of version of this argument, let's first introduce the principle of the uniformity of nature. Now, scientific inductive logic seems to assume that nature is in some sense uniform. That is, it seems to assume that unobserved or future events will tend in some ways to resemble observed or past events, right? So, for example, right, scientific inductive logic would intuitively make this sort of argument a strong argument, right? Or recognize that this is a strong argument. First premise, all emeralds thus far observed are green. Conclusion, thus the next emerald we observe will be green, right? So this argument seems to rely on nature being uniform in some way, right? We see that all emeralds we've observed are green, therefore we conclude that the unobserved emeralds are green too, right? And scientific inductive logic would recognize this sort of argument as a weak argument, an inductively weak argument. All, again, first premise, all emeralds thus far observed are green. Thus, the next emerald to be observed will be blue, right? something other than green. Right? We would intuitively, intuitively view this as a weak argument because we tend to think that nature is uniform, or scientific inductive logic tends to assume that nature has a certain uniformity or regularity to it. Now, thus far, we're sort of leaving the uniformity of nature as this kind of vague or intuitive notion. Um, to actually cash it out and make it precise leads to some uh, interesting problems and difficulties that we're going to discuss in the, some future videos for this week. We talk about what's called the new problem of induction. Um, but for now, we'll just leave the principle of uniform, uh, uniformity of nature at this sort of um, intuitive or vague uh, level. Okay, taking that on board, we can now give a sort of argument that scientific inductive logic is justified in the sense of suggestion three. That is, that it's optimal. And the argument goes like this. Look, either nature is uniform or it's not, right? If nature is uniform, scientific inductive logic will be successful, right? As in the case with the emerald argument, right? all emeralds are green, therefore the next uh, scientific inductive logic would have us predict that the next emerald will be green, right? Um, if nature is uniform, that will be a successful prediction. So scientific inductive logic will be reliable, right? If however nature is not uniform, then no method will be successful, right? Um, if there's no uniformities at all that we can pick out in nature, then how are we going to make any sort of successful or reliable system of inductive logic? Conclusion, if any method of inductive logic is successful, scientific inductive logic will be too. Right? So this is a deductively valid argument that results in the conclusion that scientific inductive logic is optimal or justified in the sense of suggestion three. Uh, now, one is premise one is a logical truth. It's a tautology of propositional logic, right? Either P or not P. Either nature is uniform or it's not. Uh, the second premise is plausible, um, at least at the sort of vague level at which we've been discussing these issues, right? If nature is uniform, scientific inductive logic will be successful because it's picking up on those uniformities or regularities in nature to project out and make successful predictions. So the real challenge then is justifying premise three. Why think that the third premise is true? Namely that if 
nature is not uniform, there's not going to be any method that'll work. Why wouldn't there be maybe some crazy method um, that would uh, work? Well, suppose that nature was not uniform, right? And that some crazy system of inductive logic was still reliable. Right? Let's call it method X. Okay. Then there's actually, we've sort of undercut ourselves because there now is a uniformity in nature, namely the reliability of method X. That seems to be projectable from the past to the future. So scientific inductive logic then says we have the following strong argument, right? First premise, method X has been reliable in the past. To the conclusion, method X is generally reliable most of the time, right? So we now have an argument that we should use method X from scientific inductive logic, right? Thus, if method X is a successful method of prediction, then scientific logic, inductive logic will be eventually as well, because if method X is generally successful, eventually we'll get enough um, uh, confirmation of its successfulness that scientific inductive logic will pick up on that by an argument like the one we saw in the last slide, and eventually have us employing method X as well, so we'll be just as successful as the people employing method X. Okay, okay. so this is a, a general sort of argument that scientific inductive logic meets the criteria for rational justification that are contained in suggestion three. Let's consider an objection to this sort of line, just like we considered an objection in the case of the inductive justification of induction. Now recall from our discussion of that justification, the inductive justification of induction, that a system of inductive logic is really comprised of various levels. So to justify a system of logic, we have to justify each of its levels. Remember, the levels correspond to different levels of arguments, with first-level arguments making only reference to objects and events in the world, no references to arguments themselves. Uh, level two arguments being arguments about or making reference to level one arguments. Level three arguments making reference to level two arguments, and so on. And for each level of arguments, we have criteria or standards, uh, or a system of logic would have criteria or standards that would tell us when arguments of that level are good or bad or inductively strong or inductively weak. Right? And if we want to justify a system of inductive logic, we want each of its level of rules or standards to be justified. Now, if we employ suggestion three for our understanding of rational justification, we then have to show that every level of scientific inductive logic will be reliable if any system of rules at that level is reliable. Right? So we want to show something like this, right? That if level one, uh, that level one of scientific inductive logic will be successful if level rule, uh, first level rules of any scientific induct, excuse me, of any inductive logic are. I should say uh, inductive logic, not scientific inductive logic. So when I upload the slides, I'll change that to uh, inductive logic. So uh, we also, we furthermore want to show that level two of scientific inductive logic will be successful if second level rules of any inductive logic are. And more generally, we want to show that level K of scientific inductive logic will be successful if level K rules of any inductive logic are. Okay. So this is what we have to show to show that scientific inductive logic is really justified in the sense of suggestion three. Right? That would really make us want to use or employ uh, scientific inductive logic. But the pragmatic justification of induction has not shown this. right? What's been shown, rather, is that if any system of inductive logic is successful at a particular level, okay, then scientific inductive logic will eventually provide a justifying level, um, argument for that system's level k rules one level up, right? that is the, at, the, at the k plus one level. right? So if uh, a particular method, say method x, is very reliable at the first level, right? then eventually there'll be a level two argument that's strong by the standards of scientific inductive logic that will get us use, that will get us to recognize the uh, reliability of method X. But this doesn't mean that we have a justification for the various levels of scientific inductive logic. For example, we've not shown that the first level rules of scientific inductive logic will succeed if any will, right? Um, it might be still that the first level rules of, of inductive logic for all we've said are unsuccessful, while the first level rules of some other crazy system, maybe counter-induction, um, are successful. Right. 
Okay. So the, let's see. Uh, here we go. All right. So that was the, the second prominent response to traditional problem reduction, the pragmatic justification. Um, again, it's very. It has a lot of intuitive plausibility to it. Raises a lot of interesting ideas, um, but it's not totally uncontroversial without worries, as we've seen. Now, in the next video, we'll look at a more metaphysical um, uh, solution to the problem of uh, induction, nomological explanatory justification. It too will have some intuitive plausibility to it, I think, um, but also some worries to it. Um, so that's what we'll look at in the next video. So before you watch that, be sure to complete the participation poll for this video. And uh, thanks for watching.